All right, so as we said before, this final panel is called In With the New, New Ways for Nonprofits. And the gentleman who will be introducing our illustrious group is um, Robert Gallucci. He is the dean of the Edmund A. Walsh School of Foreign Service at Georgetown. And he is a leading expert in international efforts to stop weapons of mass destruction programs in US foreign policy. His career with the US State Department included service on the first post-Gulf War arms inspection effort known as the UN Special Commission on Iraq and as the lead ambassador responsible for the negotiation of the 1994 Agreed Framework, which had significantly impact on North Korea's nuclear weapons program. After many years of distinguished service as Dean of the School of Foreign Service, Dr. Gallucci will become president of the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation in July. Congratulations. Please <laughs> join me, Dr. Gallucci. Good afternoon, everyone. We have a uh, distinguished panel uh, that is going to be led by um, Mike McCurry, and my happy task is to introduce him to you. Um, it is my plight in life to introduce people who need no introduction, and uh, Mike fits that description. Um, he is a principal um, and at Public Strategies Washington Incorporated, where he provides counsel on communication strategies and management uh, to corporate and nonprofit clients. Uh, Mike uh, is known as a veteran political strategist and spokesperson with over 30 years experience in Washington. He served in the White House as press secretary to Bill Clinton and as a spokesman for the Department of State, which I think, Mike, is where we met or first met. Before that, uh, he was director of communications for the Democratic National Committee and held a variety of leadership roles in national campaigns for the Democratic ticket over a 20-year period. Mike began his career on the staff of the United States Senate, holding a number of important positions, uh, including uh, the one of press secretary to Senator Daniel, Daniel Patrick Moynihan. One must assume that that was one of his more formative experiences. Mike serves on boards or advisory councils uh, for Share Our Strength, the Council for Excellence in Government, the Junior Statesman Foundation, Children's Scholarship Fund, Wesley Theological Seminary, and the Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs, which, as some of you know, is located uh, in a small uh, university in New Jersey. Um, Mike. Uh, is a graduate of both Princeton University and Georgetown University. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mike to this panel. Have a seat, panel. Thank you, Ambassador Gallucci. I'm glad you didn't go through the long list of uh, presidential campaigns I work for to prove that I am also, in fact, an international loser when it comes to politics. But it's a delight to welcome this panel. We have got a, a very exciting group to close this very interesting day uh, in which the theme really is, for this session, is going to be about the changes that we've seen in the nonprofit sector and the exciting things that are happening to reshape that sector as we look ahead to the future. This is, as the last panel of our day, one in which we want to look forward to say, how can all of us together rethink the ways in which we do uh, the important work that all of us struggle to do to change lives, help lives, save lives uh, in the work that we do together. Uh, I think that the changes that we've seen in the world uh, are familiar to all of us, but I would identify three that I think have shaped some of what uh, the change is about that we've seen. Uh, the first is no no so the end of the Cold War, the rise of globalization, the change in the configuration of the world in which we live and how that's impacted the world that so many of the international nonprofits do. Uh, but then here at home, we're seeing change too. And it's not just the change that if you think back to uh, when our current president announced his campaign for president, it didn't say Georgetown Global Forum, it said change right on that podium at which he announced his 
campaign for president, and that has been a dominant theme that is reshaping our political order in Washington now. But the change also comes about because of a generational change. The baby boomers, I plead guilty, uh, are exiting stage right as a new generation of leadership comes to power. That has profound implications, I think, for a lot of the work we do. And then third, the one that's uh, obvious to all of us because we are probably checking Blackberries and doing things like that, the information technology revolution, which I think has reordered the way in which uh, we conduct our lives, the, the quality of our lives. All of these have had a significant impact. To, uh, to discuss that and how it's impacted this sector and how it's, how it's brought opportunity uh, for innovation and change and then uh, put a different role on each of the individuals uh, who are part of this, we've got a great panel. Uh, starting off, I'll introduce each and then uh, we'll go to some questions and then, of course, go to your questions at the end. Uh, our, uh, the first, uh, Charles McCormick, I think, uh, most known to most in this room. Uh, he is president of Save the Children, an independent nonprofit organization with programs in the United States in more than uh, 50 countries, a budget of over $400 million. I don't know whether that's up or down in current circumstances, uh, and more than 6,000 staff worldwide. Also a member of the board of directors of the international Save the Children, which is even larger, operating in 120 countries around the, country, around the world. Uh, and importantly, he is also uh, board chair of Interaction, uh, the national association of over 160 U.S. international humanitarian and development organizations that work together in coalition. Uh, important because that is a segue into our next panelist, uh, Sam Worthington, who is the president and chief executive officer of Interaction. Uh, Interaction is the nation's largest uh, relief and development non uh, relief organizations of non-governmental organizations. Uh, previous to his service at Interaction, uh, he chaired the, the PVO Standards and Membership Committee of that organization, so had leadership roles there, and was Chief Executive Officer of Plan USA, mm -hmm. uh, which was an Interaction member organization operating in 49 countries around the world. It, it would not uh, be necessary, I think, because you have it in your, your packets to go through the extraordinary uh, academic and uh, institutional connections both have, but as leaders in the NGO nonprofit sector, uh, I'd say arguably two of the, the finest leaders that we, we have. Uh, our next panel, I'm delighted to welcome Bill Drayton, who is Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Ashoka, uh, Innovators for the Public. He is a social entrepreneur, and we're going to hear probably more about that as we go through this panel. He launched Ashoka in 1981, and then I think, uh, probably to your surprise, found himself declared a MacArthur Fellow in 1984, which really allowed him opportunity to do more full-time work, uh, having launched Ashoka from uh, his role at McKinsey and Company. Uh, he will tell you a lot more about some of the things that they are doing, but. Uh, it's extraordinarily important as we think about change and innovation. Bill's prior life, which is relevant to a lot of our debates today as an assistant administrator at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, included launching the admissions trading program that I think has had figured so prominently in our debate about the Kyoto Treaty and figures prominently in our debate about global climate change today. And then last, it's a real pleasure to mention, to, to introduce as a, as a substitute at the last minute, although you were invited originally anyhow, Anthony Edwards, uh, who will be f very familiar to all of you who are fans of VR because, lo and behold, Dr. Mark Green is in fact alive. And uh, <laughs> an award-winning award -winning actor, performer, director, uh, but here today because he has a fascinating story to tell about how an individual can make a difference in philanthropy. He'll tell you more about Shoe for Africa, the organization that uh, he has founded as we go on later on. But 